Rush. I'm Ted Hall. And I'm Amanda Harrow. We start off tonight with breaking news out of Knoxville. No matter who you talk to in this community, you hear that underlying tone of desperation. People are desperate for answers. They are desperate to find Carly. And of course, they are desperate for justice. I had an exclusive interview okay. with Carly's father the mm -hmm. other day. And part of what we talked about was what is that moment going to be like for you when she is finally home with you? And he said, it's going to be bittersweet. Kyle, I must ask you a question. <laughs> That's my favorite one, by it, the way. <laughs> it took him two years to grow that. Uh -huh. Is it naturally curly? Because mine grows straight down. Yeah, yours grows straight down, <laughs> so does his. Okay. Deputies in Blunt County still searching for a team they say is armed and dangerous. They say a 16-year-old assaulted a corrections officer, took that officer's gun, and then ran off. If this was just a practice, I cannot wait to see what tomorrow yeah, looks like. Big. Thousands of people were actually here today to see all the pilots practicing their moves up in the air. All of them, of course, getting ready for the big show. It is going to be absolutely incredible. I really hope all of you have the opportunity to come out here because my jaw was on the ground the entire day. Be honest because no one's listening right now. It's just us here. Mm -hmm. Did you have a taste at work on the job? <laughs> That's a yes. Well, Heather Haley actually <laughs> sleeping like... over in the station on a little cot so she can get up bright and early. And Ted, I'm really sorry about this. What, what but I think do? Twitter, I think they said that I had oh, to no. throw snowballs at you. Oh, no. uh -oh. These are the UT practice gloves. You Even go better. Why you know, do you have them? I'm, I have them because it's raining. And I don't want my <laughs> hands to get wet. Another big question. I've been thinking about this all day. Are we in a kosher hot dog right now? <laughs> <laughs> that is a good question. Um, Oscar Mayer actually doesn't offer any kosher products. Oh, but... gosh, I got to go. <laughs> so, you know, the TBI has been very hesitant to talk about any sort of sighting because up until today, there had been so well, many. How many so, of them were there? Yeah. Right. So when we saw that tweet from them, we knew we've got a call on this. The only reason the officer wasn't hit was because there was no bullet in the chamber at the time. Our reporter, Stephen Powell, is on scene following this. He just sent us an email saying that officers are headed to East Broadway for a possible sighting. Okay. You've got a pool. Yes. Imagine just going to your backyard, you're taking a leisurely swim, mm -hmm. and you're doing the doggy paddle, because that's the only swim move you know. No, I know And all. then there's a huge gator in the pool with you. Or you take a look at how full the parking lot is here, right outside of Rogersville Police Department. I just spoke with the chief. He tells me this is literally the busiest he has ever seen, this parking lot. And the gunmen are dead. Three others, including a police officer, are hurt. That police officer is expected to be okay. Photojournalist Pat Middendorf is flying in the helicopter right now, bringing us this live view from the sky. This gives you perspective. It is a good idea to stay away. Anytime THP is working a fatality on the interstate, they spend a lot of time investigating, and we've got multiple vehicles involved in this crash. That means they are going to be closed down for a while as they continue to get to the bottom of what exactly caused this fiery crash. A busy night for Knoxville police who have worked two separate shootings in a matter of hours. We're following this breaking news out of Knoxville tonight. Local 8 News reporter Stephen Powell is at the scene of the latest shooting near Western Avenue. And Stephen, witnesses report that one man has died. Where are we in the search for Carly? Well, James Trent told me tonight that he's asking everyone, no matter where you live in East Tennessee, to check your barn, maybe a shed in your backyard or your property, if you have a lot of property, and look for signs of his daughter. He Is it red right here it's, in this general area? It's not so much here or here, or, but just but right all here, here okay. is red. Yeah. We're still following the devastation in Oklahoma, near Oklahoma City. This is a live look at where a tornado just hit a few minutes ago. You can see the devastation is widespread. At one point, this tornado may have spanned about two miles wide, so a lot of area that it's covered, homes ripped apart, buildings destroyed. Our Kyle Warnke had a really amazing experience as well. He got to go up in one of the Fat Alberts. Those are the big planes that actually carry some of the Blue Angels. He got really close to the cockpit, tried to brag about it to Kelsey, but Kelsey's already been in a Blue Angel twice now, so she said that was kids' play. Heavy downpours. Kyle tells us it is lightning strike after lightning strike. If you're looking for work, Craig Jenkins is here, and he's given everybody a job. That Yeah, exactly. Everybody who wants one gets one. If you, you get a job, you get a job, everybody. But Mark, pa Mark Packer doesn't have the personality to work right. out there. Everybody but Mark Packer can have a job. I just got off the phone with uh, a member of Front Street Baptist Church that's in Statesville, North Carolina, just outside of Winston-Salem. He tells me that they are fairly positive that this bus does belong to their congregation. They had members of the church at the Fall Jubilee in Gatlinburg. If every step 
counts as a year gone back in time. Then eventually, this path leads to a story long grown over. This was the uh, concrete foundation for a steam engine. And nearly forgotten. When people walk through the woods here now, uh, they could walk right past this area and never realize what, what an important part of Tennessee history occurred at this very spot. But Barry Thacker sees what many miss, what the passage of time has nearly erased at Coal Creek. On uh, May 19th, 1902, Every male member in the town of Freightville perished in this disaster except for, except for three. 216 men. They would walk down the, down the trail. 216 men. Had just gone into, into the mine. 216 men. Who came to work that day were killed. Sadly, this, this has been a part of Tennessee history that has been forgotten. There's no way, though, that Louise Nelson will ever forget. This is my grandfather. What happened to George Desern? 23 years old when he died. Newspapers more than a century old. This is a whole list of all the miners. Record the story of her grandfather. George Desern of Coal Creek. And four great uncles. The scene at the entrance to Freighterville Mine is heart rendering. 1,000 women and children are assembled there. Mother Desern lost five of her sons and two of her son, son-in-laws uh, as a result of the explosion. Can you imagine that? At 96 years old, as Louise nears the end of her life. It takes, you listen to it. Look how fast it's going. She begins to understand how short it is. And it goes by so swiftly. And holds her family's history a little tighter. I don't want these men to be forgotten. I don't know of anything that's more important. Nearly 100 miners killed in the explosion at Freighterville are now buried here. But 10 of them left something behind before they passed. And those were the ones who wrote the farewell messages. Those miners knew that uh, within the next hour they were going to perish, so they wrote what was dear to their heart. Oh God, for one more breath, Ellen, remember me as long as you live. God and family. Those are the two things that every one of those farewell messages discussed. For decades, that's all that was discussed. It was so painful for them that they wouldn't talk about it to their children. And eventually, the story slipped away. Many of the headstones say that the miners are gone but not forgotten. And sadly, this has been a part of Tennessee history that has been forgotten. Come in and have a seat, please. Forgotten until Barry brought it back to life. Come in, have a seat, please. In every fifth, eighth, and eleventh grade classroom. On page 247. In the state of Tennessee. My grandfather was a coal miner. The history of Anderson County's coal mines is now required learning. There is an amazing amount of history here. The final resting place for countless men is not where the story goes to die. Now I can pass it on to my great-granddaughters and great-grandsons. Instead, it lives, plain as day, set in stone. And it will validate what it says on their headstones, that they are gone but not forgotten. In this home... Well, I thought we'd sit close together. Saying grace... Okay, you ready? has always been a saving grace. Heavenly Father, I thank you for another day clean for Mom, Lord. But Megan and her mother, Angie, didn't always pray before breakfast. Leave me that kiwi, please. In fact, there was a time when divine intervention didn't intervene. I made the hardest decision that I've ever made in my life, and I cut all ties with my mother. For 22 years, Angie was a full-time addict. This is me and my daughter. 
and part-time mom. Almost every milestone in Megan's life was marred by Angie's addiction. Her senior pictures the day they were made, I was uh, out in the car in the parking lot, passed out. How she had the grace to a smile, you know, knowing, I wonder if I'm gonna go out, my mom's not breathing. And the days in between those milestones. I sold my body for money. Um, I, she walked in a couple times. Weren't any better. I was molested by one of her drug dealers twice, at age seven and at age nine. She saw me do things that no child, no child should ever see. This was the other wake-up call that Angie never answered. I just missed her more than anything. Her own mother used with her. This is my mom, Nancy. Battled addiction, then died of an overdose. She loved butterflies, purple and yellow flowers. But even that wasn't enough to inspire Angie to get clean. Instead, it dragged her down even deeper. Everybody has their different rock bottom, as I say, but you would think finding my mom dead from an overdose would have been it. But instead, it just fueled it. Angie's last chance at life came in a brush with death when an overdose nearly killed her. I woke up in the hospital, and they told me just how, how far gone I was. This was the only thing powerful enough to bring her back. And that was the real defining moment right there. EMTs used naloxone to reverse the effects of the overdose and loosen death's grip. I took the opportunity to turn my life around. I did not waste the chance that God has given me. What was naloxone for you? Game changer, life changer. This is where it all started. And in a way, it's where Angie's addiction finally ended. That was my bed. Um, this was pretty much my little cubby hole in the world. Lord, thank you for this day you've given us. Thank you for our salvation. Thank you for our recovery. After nearly two years of sobriety. Today actually marks 21 months since I came through these doors. Angie comes back to the shepherd's home. My life was forever changed because of it. Not as an addict in search of help, but as an advocate willing to give it. I know who I am now for the first time in 43 years. I know who I am. <laughs> I hope she knows her faith in me wasn't wasted. Naloxin saved Angie. There's no doubt in her mind. But she always wonders. I'll always miss her. If it could have saved her mother. If I had had that, would she be sitting here with me today? In the beginning, Angie didn't believe in divine intervention. Well, here's the first time for everything, I suppose. But things have changed. Listen. Angie has changed. God doesn't make mistakes. He has a grand design for all of us. And to her, that is a saving grace. You don't look like a kicker bear. If there is one thing in life that I always hoped to witness was a miracle, and I got it in my mom. Keep me warm. Tick, tick, tick. Mic tick, mic tick. Dry run it. <clears throat> All right, let's go. Some of us hold on to secrets for a lifetime. I don't know if I like that one. And take them to the grave. Let me hit that one more time. But Mark Pack has always taken his to the mic. Been through it all before. I've been through it all before. But they throw in at me now. I tell the devil like I got some no hat. Music's always been an escape, been freedom for me. The mic is where Mark's secrets come to light. And this is where the darkest one was made. Yeah, it's a heavy burden to carry. You know, I took somebody out of this world. So I killed somebody. In 2006, in a dark alley off of Clinton Highway. As a man, I know him. Mark hit and killed a man named Michael Wilson. Something came in front of my car, I don't know what it was. And so I went home. 
and later I watched on the news that a hit and run happened and somebody was killed, and so I went and turned myself in. Mark pled guilty to leaving the scene of an accident and showed up in court for sentencing. And I had to face their family, his family, you know, and hear their stories about No, this was my brother. This was my son. Those stories are now a part of his story. My rhymes above every bitch. Told Jesus. through rhythm and rhyme. To write down what I'm going through and to release it is takes a big weight off of my shoulders. I'm trying to balance but the guilt? Do you think you'll ever forgive yourself? That will never go away. Nope. <laughs> Two years later, life came to claim its debt. I heard him coming. And Alex McCarty was there as Mark paid up. He swore he thought he was watching somebody die. Mark was on a new street bike, fresh out of prison and enjoying freedom from lockup. And it was a beautiful day, January 1st, 2014. But when he locked up the brakes. And I hit a telephone pole. Right here. It wasn't just life that broke apart. They said blood was coming out of my mouth and my nose, and my eyes was rolled in the back of my head. And I was, you know, going into seizures and shaking real bad. And, and we just started praying. I'm going to be honest with you. We just started praying for the guy. And then I remember waking up three days later in the hospital. That's when he learned the exact price that he paid. My reality is project houses still I dream of palaces. I'm coping with the consequences, dealing with paralysis. The lifestyle that we live in is limited to these challenges. Are you ready? Yeah, you want to pull up on that? They're up. <laughs> the pants is the hardest, and I guess the shoes will come second. Every morning, after Mark moves through the grueling motions of getting out of bed. I will never get used to this, <laughs> never. He gravitates back to his music. I put my heart in this, I'm an artist with my words of music is the only escape I have, hope you feel me at it. It's definitely therapy for my paralysis. But nothing he puts on paper will ever put that night out of his mind. It's kind of like karma or I, I kind of feel like I deserve it because maybe his legs weren't a high enough price to pay for taking a life. Maybe he owed something more. It didn't take long for Mark to find a way to repay the world. I'm going to be one in four people that they do this to. He's part of a research study to help people who are paralyzed walk again. And even if he doesn't, someone else might. This might not help me, but this might help somebody else in the future. Every time I see that light pole, I will think of Mark. There are secrets left in Mark's world. All right, let's go. Ones only the future can answer. I don't know what it is, but I believe this guy will walk again. And I've never stopped believing that. I just think that it's possible. I, I think with hope and faith that anything is possible. And while the guilt will never leave him. Every minute, every second, every day, I'm paralyzed. And so this forces me to think about the mistake that I made. I guess I deserve it. There's one thing that never wavers. The release of putting pen to paper. bandages, assessing what the damage is. And mouth to mic. Music can maybe bring me out of it, and that'll be my life saving. My life is is a song, is a story.